What's cracking my photography friends? I am currently now in Germany and today I'm taking you along with me for a full photo shoot from start to finish, walking through how I shoot locations all the way up to editing the photos. We're at Lake Ibsi in Germany, pretty epic location. Let's get into it. So when it comes to landscape photography, there's a lot we can't control. The mercy of mother nature and the conditions we get provided, which can make it even more important to be as prepared as possible. So in this video, I look at three things, the planning of a shoot, looking at conditions like light and weather, the actual shooting part where I'll look at what gear I use and what I'm looking for on a shoot like this. And lastly, of course, the editing where I'll walk you through my editing process. All right, so we've made it to the little spot, the location we're gonna mostly be shooting at today, which brings me to the first point when planning out any photo shoot, and that is all the preparation and planning around your location. When it comes to landscape locations, it's always better to allow as much time as possible, which can sometimes mean spending multiple days at the same location. As this isn't always possible, things like Google Earth, photo planning apps, and a good Google search can often be your best option. Obviously, checking weather conditions, as well as checking recent tags on Instagram, whatever you can to get a good feel of the location. So by coming here yesterday, we actually worked out that at this location, the best light is actually a while after sunrise because the light takes a little while to peek over the mountain here. But when it does, you get some really nice light, the sun hitting the trees. So especially when you're shooting a landscape location, you need to decide or look when the light is going to be best. Usually, obviously that's around sunrise or sunset and work with those conditions. You can use apps like photo peels and other things as well, which are really useful to plan out your shoot. So the light is starting to come up. I'm gonna grab some gear and start taking some photos. All right, so when planning a shoot like this, the next thing you need to really think about is which gear you're going to take. So a landscape photography location much like this one, obviously I'm going to need a wide angle lens. For me, I'm using a 15 to 35 wide angle RF 2.8 lens, which is gonna be great for most of my landscape shots. And then I've got a 50 millimeter prime for those slightly tighter shots, or if I wanna shoot some portraits of me or Mitch, Really great focal length, I love the 50. And then lastly, I've also got a 100 to 400 just to get those tighter shots. So I've got my drone in here as well. But most of all, you need to think about which lenses are going to suit that particular location, which focal length is going to suit your shots. The light's coming up, so I better go take some photos. <laughs> Here with the mix of these three lenses, I'm really aiming to capture the same location from different perspectives and help tell a better overall story of the location rather than just one simple wired landscape image. To do this, it often helps putting a subject in some of your images and remember to shoot both landscape and portrait orientation. When it comes to sharing these images, I love posting carousels on Instagram because you can really share more of a story with multiple images which we'll look at soon when I get to the editing part. Now time to edit these photos. I'm super stoked on this morning, so I can't wait to go back and edit them. I'll walk you through my editing process. All right, so all ready to start editing. Step one is obviously importing all the photos into Lightroom. Now when I'm traveling, I like to sort my photos basically by the day or by the date, just to make it easy to track and come back to to find those photos. So I edit in Lightroom Classic, which means all the photos need to be stored externally on a hard drive. For me, when I'm traveling, I like to have a fast SSD, and then I back everything again up to a slower, cheaper, regular hard drive as well. So I've got two backups of all my photos. So once everything has imported into Lightroom and I'm ready to go to start editing, the first thing I need to do is make some selections, basically filter out all the photos that I wish to edit. For me, I do two stars for every photo that I wanna go back in and edit. Once I've edited that and I'm happy with it, I will put it to five stars. Sometimes I'll use four stars as well for those photos that are almost ready or I've started editing or I really want to work on at some point as well. Now the other thing I like to do when I'm traveling is use smart previews. This just means basically it will save a smaller file of that photo 
so you can edit it without needing your hard drive plugged in, which is really handy when you're on the road and moving around. So I do this for all those two start images. Then when I need to export or open it up into Photoshop, I will then plug the hard drive back in. Now in this video, I'm obviously not going to edit all those photos that I've two starred. I've picked a few just to go through in this video. So the first one I'm going to edit here is a drone panorama. You can see I've got these three images here as well as the JPEG preview. Now I often shoot these vertical panoramas when I'm using the drone. Quite easy to put together in Lightroom. So if I select these three photos that I want to stitch together, I'm going to right click and go photo merge, panorama. So I have a few different options here. I'm going to see how they look, cylindrical. That looks a little bit better to me. I'm going to auto crop, auto settings and create stack. Let's just have a look at the boundary wall. Now I often just play around with these settings to see what looks best overall. And then we're gonna go merge. And now we have our panorama merged there, ready to go. This JPEG, I don't often edit because you're not gonna get as much quality out of it. That's why I like to stitch them together myself in Lightroom. Now we've got basically a raw panorama there, ready to go edit. So this one, I'm gonna pop a preset on to start with. Let's go that first one and I'm going to crop to 4x5 on this one. And now I'm just going to tweak the colors a little bit. So come down to HSL. And I might need to brighten it up a little bit as well. I'm also on this island, so I might use a radial filter there. The other thing I want to do on this one is really make that orange heart stand out. So I'm going to come back to HSL boost that orange a little bit, come back to hue, use my selector tool. Same with luminance, and I'm just gonna really boost that to make that stand out. So the next thing I wanna do is just bring back a little bit more detail in the sky here. So just reduce those highlights a fraction. And I just wanna create a little bit more mood on this. So I'm gonna grab another radial filter, bring that in from the top. Bring that dehaze down a little bit, boost the exposure, bring that right towards orange. Just playing around with the settings here, might bring that clarity and texture down just to really soften that. And before, after, I'm pretty happy with that one. So let's move on to the next photo. If you're wondering, I'm using my cinematic preset pack here with all these photos. So let's come to this landscape shot here. So the first thing I want to do to this one is come down to transform and just straighten it up. I'm going to hit auto and that's done. Pretty good job there of straightening this one. So come back up to basic, just boost my exposure there a little bit. And again, I'm going to pop a preset on. So let's have a look at our options. That's much too heavy. That one doesn't look too bad. It's probably either that or Maybe again this orange one, but what I'm going to do is maybe bring a little bit of blue back in this one. So about there, I'm quite happy with that. Again, I'm going to crop in ready for this Instagram post. So let's go four by five, probably about there on this one. I just want to fix this white patch. So I'm going to use our spot healing tool. It's done a pretty good job. Same in the water here with the reflection. The next thing I want to do on this one is really increase that light in the top left corner. So I'm going to grab a radial filter, bring that down from the top, rotate that in. I'm going to come down and use light, which is just a radial filter I've saved, which is basically exposure, negative texture, negative clarity, and a bit of negative dehaze or haze. Bring that temperature more towards orange, a bit warmer. And I'm just going to crop down a little bit further, I think. I just come down to my tone curve maybe just give it a slight fade there on that one as well maybe also boost these oranges a fraction orange maybe even the luminance just to make those leaves stand out a little bit more and i'm pretty happy with that again before after all right so moving on to pretty much our last image here which is going to be three images in one so probably going to use the same preset on each of these just to keep it consistent. So these I'm all going to crop to 12 by 5. 
so they fit together neatly in a 4x5 post. I'll show you in a second. All right, so I'm gonna use this first one. Just gonna bring that highlights down a little bit, bring it more towards a warmer white balance, and maybe just adjust the tone curve to bring back those blacks a little bit. So let's copy that, sync that over to this other photo. Yes, happy with those settings. Just need to change the exposure a bit on this one. Again, 12 by five. So I picked this photo just to break up when you're doing these triplet photos, it's nice to have a real detailed shot. So I think these trees are gonna look really nice and the color on those trees with the sun hitting it is really nice as well. Next one is this photo of Mitch. This one, let's pop the same preset on, see how that looks. I just check the other presets on this one. I actually like that a bit better. So I'm just gonna adjust the tone curve just so it looks a little bit more like the other images and again, to 12 by 5. Bring those three images into Photoshop, so I've got them selected there. We're going to go edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. So this is how I create these kind of triplet photos. I'm going to crop to 4 by 5. Just make that a little bit bigger. Make sure these aren't selected and go tick. All right, so now I'm going to resize everything. Command T to transform and just match the size of my crop. Might put this one at the top, enter, come down to my second layer, again, transform. I think this one will look good in the middle, done. Third layer, again, transform, resize to fit. And there we go, hit save. And that should open back up in Lightroom once it's saved. All right, so pretty happy with how those edits turned out. This has been a really interesting day, both shooting and editing. Hope you have found this video useful. Got a few more to come from Europe before I head home. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.